it's never too late to do what's right. I think that's the first thing. Uh, it's unfortunate that it has taken so long for this action to be taken, but it has been done, and we're now moving on a process to try to get her pardoned. And I think that's historic, and I think it is good. I think it also allows the society and us as legislators to focus on the question of gender-based violence. It is too prevalent in the society. Tremendous amount of work is being done by Minister Dolores and by the Special Envoy and also by other members, other civil society organizations to address perceptions, to change policies, to change people's view. And of course, we have to strengthen the police and to get prosecutions and convictions for persons who are involved in gender-based violence. So this uh, motion for the exoneration and the pardon of Nora Param focuses the nation's attention on this problem that we have. One of the very important aspects of the Nora Param case is that we pay so much attention to the fact that she was hung. Remember at the time there was no uh, appellate court, there was nothing of the sort for her to have recourse to. But what Ms. Parham must be given credit for, the system failed her because she did what we encourage victims of domestic violence to do today. She kept reporting it. I am being abused, I am being abused, I am being abused. So hopefully this, the recognition of her bravery um, could yield the results that more people who are abused in domestic situations are brave enough to come out and make the reports. And make the reports, and not only make the reports, but the time comes for you to go to court to actually show up and testify. But when we passed the recent domestic violence legislation, I had said, for example, that if there are witnesses to a domestic violence situation, we should add to that piece of legislation, which we haven't added. We should add to that, that if you have a third person who witnesses domestic violence, then that third person's evidence should be good enough to proceed with a case. Because many times, victims are abused, they do make the reports, the very few of them make the reports, and even fewer than that actually follow through by going to the courts. Hopefully our laws can get to the point where if somebody witnesses it, you don't need the virtual complainer, you don't need the abused person as the only evidence required to convict a person who is an abuser. So from her story, learn that she did her best. She reported the abuse, she consistently was complaining to the authorities, that's what you should do. The system failed her then, but Please be encouraged by the effort she made to expose the abuse she was suffering.